Across the vast majority of the world, Formula 1 is considered the top of the tree for open wheel racing. However, far across the Atlantic, there's a small tribe of people who think a little bit differently. They're called the Americans, and many of them aren't interested in this strange Formula 1 business. Well, I don't gun, never heard of Formula 1. We don't race on tracks with corners in these lands. No, over in the old US of A, you'll find a much bigger following for IndyCar. This is a series that's been going for donkey's years now, and come through various splits and reunifications to what we have today. As you would expect, there's been a fair few video games about IndyCar over the years. Most of these I don't own, because I was never interested when I was 7 years old. But here's one I did get for whatever reason. Newman Hass Racing, a game from 1998 published by the same people who did the first two F1 games on the PlayStation. You know, the good ones. Newman Hass Racing takes its name from Newman Hass Racing, the renowned team which ran from 1983 to 2011, winning eight drivers titles during that time. For a game with just their name on though, it doesn't exclusively feature them. It's much wider than that and covers quite a few teams and drivers. So let's jump in and remind ourselves what this game has to offer. Drivers, start your engines! Welcome to Milwaukee. I've picked Christian Fittipaldi for this, as it's a famous surname that I recognise. And he's in a Newman house, which is sort of the point of this game. Looks like we're starting on an oval. How hard can that be? Well, the handling is very twitchy. Might take a few laps to get used to that, but overall it's not too bad. There's much worse controls on some racing games from this era. Anyway, it's not all circles and indie cars. They do have some proper tracks too. One of the features to help you overtake is the turbo. It gives you a speed boost, but you only get a certain amount of it, so you'll need to conserve it throughout the race. Alternatively, you could blow your load in the opening seconds, resulting in a disappointing finish for everyone involved. A problem I've had more than once. You don't have to worry too much about damage on this game. It takes quite a few hits before anything happens. These cars are pretty sturdy beasts. You can lose your front wing though if you're not careful. There it goes! As you can see, I didn't quite have the downforce to make the next corner as a result, and oh dear. You might not have heard too much of the commentary in the background so far, because I'm too busy talking, but Bob Varsha and former IndyCar champion Danny Sullivan are the ones calling the race, and boy, they are never satisfied. I think we may have seen the best this race has to offer. Yeah, it's not really gotten off the ground. Solid racing thus far. Yeah, but nothing special. Every race, according to them, is utter garbage. Look guys, I'm coming from the back, overtaking continuously, and crashing multiple times on every lap. What more do you want? Take this race in Ohio. I'm closing in on Michael Andretti for the win, but there's only a couple of corners left to go. Oh, it's close. I'm going for it round the outside. Yeah! My first win in a dramatic end to the race. Although I'm sure Bob and Danny considered it to be the height of tedium. Now I need to address the elephant in the room, or rather the elephant that isn't in the room, the Indy 500. Basically, it's not on here. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. It's IndyCar's flagship event, did they forget about it? Weren't they allowed to put it in? Who knows, but it's a shame. Fernando Alonso's not going to be playing this. Nope! Here's a strange feature. We're at Portland, and as we approach Turn 1, What's that parked on the outside of the corner? It's a tow truck picking up a car, but it's not one of the AI who's broken down. It's permanently there and doesn't ever move. Why did the developers put it there? It's a huge health and safety risk. Despite all those minor grumbles though, I quite like this game. For a 1998 PS1 game, the graphics are reasonable and the gameplay is fun. Certainly a lot better than its F1 equivalent that year. So there you go. I've finished my championship season with one solitary win and fourth in the table. Not bad I guess, better than I normally do in these games anyway. There's just one more thing I want to show you. It's a strange little bonus feature that comes with this game. The history section. Because what more could you want on the PlayStation than an encyclopedia? It's certainly extensive. All the drivers, all the tracks, bucket loads of information. Ever wanted to know Paul Newman's wedding date? It's in here. I'll leave you with this. It's the description for the bonus track, where the developers have made up some absolutely batshit mental story. Fires, locusts, pestilence, 
It makes the Bible look like something the Reverend W. Audrey wrote. Anyway, thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>